they'll be, every time I did homework, they'll be ticking it off. And if, you know, more than half of us doing the homework, we can try and fix it up. So it's pretty, like, if you read really this here, it um, explains the relationship between property, structures, uses, and applications of materials. So it's a lot of writing, it's a lot of reading, and just almost wrote learning about properties of materials. Right, so it's quite dry. Um, describes the types of materials component for processes and exposure applications for engineering development. A big part of the um, HSC is the engineering report. It's almost 40% of school reading. So, guys, um I haven't told him about the new furniture. About what? The new furniture. The furniture? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this room, it'll become a bit more like the classroom. It's in a state of transition at the moment. We're going to get a data show in here, which will make things a bit easier for you. We're going to get proper furniture so everyone's at the correct height. Um, we might even try and reconfigure it and squeeze a couple of more desks in here. Because I want this to become an engineering studies lab. But it was just foisted upon us very late in the year last year. Okay, so engineering studies tends to be, you might say it's dry, but it's a very theoretical subject, but I'd like to squeeze as many practical experiences in it for you as possible just to make it a bit more real. So being in this is a great opportunity to do that because we can move over to that metallurgical kiln over there, do some heat treatment, come back, test it, and then carry on from there. Okay, so that's the concept. But um, it does have to be able to use for a couple of weeks because whatever orders were ordered, um, they still yet to come to fruition. Okay? All right. Thanks, sir. So any problems or whatever, that's the and the teacher, please see. Okay. Um, assessment. Um, oh, one thing, I want to do. When you come here, when you come in by these outsides, I don't know if you realise, when you come across that top landing from the library, as soon as you get to the edge of the you can turn right and just follow the ground down the steps here. The reason being is later on in the year I'm going to have practical classes in there and it just gets a little bit unsafe when we've got people moving through a practical, practical class when they've probably already started to work because they might start to fall school. Okay? So, and that's the same for every year. Thanks. Have you talked about assessment in the class? that we're not to accept any assessment tasks electronically unless there's um, medical conditions or something. So we can't accept your work in the email, on the email or USB. You have to have a physical printout of any assessment tasks that you do. They need to be in on time unless there's a medical certificate. Otherwise you get zero. And a sheet, uh, what do you call that, um, indetermination. It's, sort of, it's almost automatically, if, if the marks don't go in, it's automatically generated and, 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 so, uh, and then I think if you get three, then you get your parents get a call and they come up here. So try and get your stuff in on time, because even though you might not get the end of termination, you're still getting zero. Because like, I don't know how strict they were in year 10, but with the HSC rules, and if someone finds out that someone didn't got, got a mark for it and they handed theirs in late and they didn't have a good enough explanation, the whole rest of the class, so there's 19 of you, can claim misadventure and get extra marks boosted on. So everything's done pretty strictly by the book here. And then because you've got another engineering studies class, I think there's 24 kids in the other year 11 class, they can all claim misadventure and it's yeah, a whole big legal process there. Uh, okay, so back to this. Uses mathematical, scientific, and geographical methods to solve problems of engineering. So we're doing a fair bit of maths, physics. So if you're doing maths and physics already, you would be um, at an advantage. Describes developments in technology and the impact on engineering products. We do a, a fair bit of evaluating products. 
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
just in case you need the actual pictures of the kettles. Where's the kettles? Oh, here's the kettles. Okay. That's the newest thing, that's the first one. And then there's more questions. Just do that bit there.
Polymer bodies, the polymer material. Yeah, I was thinking that was automatic switches in all the body, whatever was laid up. Because it says, okay. yeah, it does. You have to figure out which one came first. But they both came at the same time, but the box is there. So in the 50s, in built in built automatic switches that cut out at very point. Yeah. The others changed what the kettle looked like. The other thing, the following one is whatever about the other one. It just says that.
Um, features that an engineer would need to identify. I can't think of any more. To evolve. Material, wire to cordless, capacity, shape, material, cut out switch, leads. Unless there's any more we can find. No, I think I just ran around to everyone. I'm just feeling much covered. I've got handles. Materials. Where's the handles? Uh, one person had that he wanted his to be induction technology. Oh, Didn't yeah. want his to be electric. Yeah, you put it on the stove and it's going to be in your home. Yeah. Yeah, one of those. Yeah.
Easy. You can do this as one study. One paragraph or like a sentence. Right, yeah. Um, what they did? Um, 